Good afternoon, everybody. Is everybody in waiting room? Oh, okay. Hi, welcome to day three of our fellowship program. So we're excited to introduce you to our third uh, expert panel session right now, which is going to be Shanuki. She is a Jill of many trades with a proven track record. She has had 21 years of experience in the branding and communication space, and she has received many an accolade for this. She is a multidisciplinary and she has, uh, is a consultant at Common Ground as well as UNDP and is also a theater personality as well as a, a host of a popular talk show called uh, Shh, which is also a public speaker and an activist. I know it was kind of weird that said Shush, but that's the name of the talk show host and talk show. And I'm pretty sure everyone knows about it all, all, all by now. Um, excited to introduce to you Shanuki Dialvi. Shanuki, take it away. Hi, thank you, and thanks for the uh, nice introduction. Um, <laughs> this is a learning uh, experience. Mama, I'm going to talk about the experience. Oh, we have to ask and that's sounds like a lot of work. But for me, it is not. It's 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 not. Um, so please, I want you to ask me questions. Uh, we will have a few areas where I would like to workshop ideas with you all. Uh, so I'd like you all to sort of put your effort into telling me what you think and sort of using whatever we will learn today uh, for your own work. Um, so when you look at all that, then the time might not be enough, but I'll try to go as fast as possible. If you would like to ask any questions, please feel free to uh, pop it into the chat. Or if you'd like, you can at that point put, uh, switch on your mics and uh, ask me. I'm happy to answer in any way I can. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen with you now. Uh, and we're going to go through this process to get uh, my presentation. I hope everyone can see this. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, so my uh, session today is about creating powerful content. And for this particular program, uh, for the FBA program, um, the objective was how do we create very powerful, impactful, and effective content uh, with a specific focus on queer-related content and queer-friendly content. Um, but for me, I'm going to do things a little bit differently. I'm not going to focus specifically on queer alone because I think content, when it comes to content, using content, creating content, building content to create conversations, it should be a kind of a science or an art or a learning that we should have to be able to use it for any cause that we're passionate about. And definitely in this session, we are talking about the queer cause, but, um, Considering that I've been sort of involved in various other kinds of advocacies as well, uh, I am a queer ally. I'd like to think that this content is general, but can be used for the queer community as well. So uh, please do look at this as learning for anything you want to do uh, in terms of your content generation journey. And um, I don't know who the participants on this list are like personally. So I know that I've been told y'all are, uh, there are journalists here, there are content creators, there are advocates and activists, um, there are students. So I'm so happy that obviously you do come from a space where you do care about something very strongly. That's why you're here. And you also have already done work, which I would love to know more about later. So I hope that uh, if you know most of this stuff that I'm going to take you through, uh, that you can also add to it and offer your own learnings to me. Okay, so how are we going to create powerful content? I come from uh, a background in advertising. I have been in advertising in a creative leadership position for 21 years. And uh, the nature of advertising is basically having conversations with people, creating messages for brands and services that make people change their minds or make people consider what I'm trying to tell them. That's essentially what the craft of marketing is. 
And I think content generation is pretty much that because we have a cause. In this case, we're trying to make uh, this space, the Sri Lankan space, more queer inclusive. Uh, and we want people, you know, what this society sort of is struggling with this uh, concept still. Uh, and we want to shift attitudes. We want to change minds in developing and in, in having these conversations with them, uh, especially on online media. Um, so முதலில் <laughs> I'd like to find out from you. I know I don't have the time to go through with everybody here. I'm sorry. But I'd like to give the space to about three or four of you uh, who would like to, and this is a little bit of a test. I'd like to see how quick you are and how creative you are. I'd like you to introduce yourself to me in the most creative way possible. So I don't want, I am so-and-so. I went to this school. I have this many people in my family, and this is what I do. That's boring. Show me your personality, sell me who you are. Think it's an interview for a creative job or a content creator's job. Sell me yourself and I'll give you each two minutes to do it. Um, so first come, first serve, unless you want me to start calling out people. Um, I would like you to switch on your mic if you'd like to switch on your video and introduce yourself to me as well as to this uh, forum here. But tell me what is your story in the most creative way that you can. <laughs> Who's brave enough? I don't bite. I can't bite. I'm on the other side of the screen. Yes? Tarusha! Yay! I know this person. <laughs> Hi. Um, well, I'd like to think of myself as a game again in a way because um, I'm just this explosion of I think creativity as well as originality when it comes to expressing my opinions especially on social media and originality I originality express positivity because it's ultimately that's what everybody wants yeah and you know that I'm a fan follower of your fabulous work uh -huh. on TikTok. And right? I, me too. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Can we have someone else? Who wants to follow that? Be as creative as you like. You can even sing it if you want. It's fine. I mean, we're all here to create content for an important cause. So you gotta feel brave. You gotta be willing to put yourself out there and talk about it. Anyone? I think Zainab, uh, you're on mute. Okay, everyone, uh, before Shanuki starts handpicking some people. <laughs> yeah, and you can do it in any language you want. Please feel free. I also used to be a teacher. So at some point, I'm going to go into auntie mode and then I'm going to say, So before I do that, somebody please tell me, who are you? Oh, yes, Eshan Dias. Fantastic. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. The main reason I didn't raise my hand before is I'm not like, well dressed, you know, usually. That's okay. Work <laughs> from home, stomach me. Oh, wait, right. Oh my God, look at my hair. You. <laughs> so sorry. I think you've already uh, introduced a little bit of your personality immediately, right? <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, so this is what I, uh, I work, I might not be like, uh, like that I'm in the community, like a pain. 
but apart from that uh, usually my work is uh, passing the message subtly okay i use subtle ways that's what i feel like uh, i might not directly say what i want because that's boring so what i do is i use you know a little bit of flair femininity and then a conversation so that uh, it is interesting to people and at the same time the message is also uh, passed on i think if yeah. that makes sense yeah and i yeah. think uh, i i don't know anyone who doesn't know who you are but thank you <laughs> is there thank anyone you. else is there anyone else one more person let's have one more person so we had tarusha we had eshan who else Hi Shanti. Hi. Hi. Hi Minoli. Minoli here. Uh, so I don't really have much to say, but uh, I'm a queer baker with many passions, actually, including animals, plants, art, music, gaming, content creation, a whole lot. So what I'm trying to do with the platform that um, I operate on, which is mostly Instagram, is uh, raise some awareness and get people to connect with my brand and um create a positive space that people can freely express themselves and also unlearn some of the very heavy and controversial things that we have been taught the incorrect things that we have been taught from the time when we were children to now so we have a podcast that we have created and uh Also, yeah so mostly the podcast and a lot of other content that we have created to try and unlearn all the things that we have learned and relearn the correct way to be more inclusive and to just uh, radiate a lot of positivity fantastic thank you so much and i wish you all luck and blessings on your journey and i'm sure you're making quite a big difference uh, what's your what's your baking handle um it's called meme underscore bakes okay okay i'll start following that i'll send it to you later thank you so much please do please do thank you so all right um so essentially introducing yourself and introducing your work is part and parcel of what you need to do when you're creating content because it's all about creating this brand this personality whether it's about you and you being your your brand ambassador for your content or whether it's your personality that you're putting into whatever content you're creating so that it becomes uh distinguishable and it differentiates out there from what people are seeing so a lot of who you are goes into the content that you create because if you're just doing things based on other stuff that you've heard and you're not necessarily passionate about and it doesn't have any relevance to you your content is also going to be very blase it's going to be very like boring um so one of the biggest things in that little exercise was yes i wanted to know who you were but also the fact that you have to first and foremost before you start your content creation journeys you have to reflect on who are you why are you trying to do something what are you trying to say and how much of you are you going to put into it so it's almost like you introducing yourself to the world through your work so it's time for you also to think about how creatively can i introduce my mind my thoughts my passions my feelings on this subject to the world in whatever way i can using my strengths and when you discover yourself your content creation becomes much more easy i believe because that's your special signature that goes into what you do like what ishan does like what tarusha does i haven't seen minoli's work but i'm sure that's there as well so there's a there's a essence of you in your content so think about what your story is and how you're going to weave that into your content not that it needs to talk about you specifically but your your i would say your emotions your feelings your personality your flair how do you bring that into your content so first of all think of how you're going to introduce yourself to the world through what you do okay now the contents of this program are going to go through five sections and uh, each section is a little bit uh, long uh, so please bear with me i'll try to make it as as uh, dramatic as possible right we're going to go through how communication has evolved because content today content creation is very much part of the advertising and communication game what is content a lot of us already know but i'm just going to you know uh 
clarify that for our benefit. And then what I know about what you can do to make content more impactful, how do you create virality to the work that you're doing? Because it's a day and age where we need people to talk about us rather than us talking about ourselves. And then I'm going to go through the do's and the don'ts uh, when you create how, what you need to avoid and maybe what you need to improve on. And then we'll look at a few content case studies that I personally like. So going into the first section, the concept of a story, right? Everybody, when I say stories, when what is a story, usually the answer I get is, ah, there's a once upon a time, there's a protagonist, there's an antagonist, there's a story arch, and then there's a nice end with a moral. Uh, yes, that's what your traditional idea of a story is. But in today's day and age, everything that you see, everything that you hear, everything that you experience has a story attached to it. We don't realize it. And a lot of the best content out there, even if it's one little infographic or even if it's an article, it takes the viewer through a journey. It takes the viewer through an experience and it gives, it insights some sort of emotion in the person who is receiving that content and in essence that is what stories do so the first and the foremost thing that i i look at content as is their stories their stories told in different ways and it is for us to understand that everything that we do is also a story in one way or the other and considering that there are stories everywhere we have to create stories that stand out and especially when it comes to um, queer stories and queer positive stories, uh, right now there is such a, in, especially in Sri Lanka, there is such a, a clear sort of demarcated difference about what's queer content and what's not. And then you have this target audience, which is predominantly Sri Lankan people who don't like queer content. The minute they look at that, ah, that's queer, <laughs> barrier. That's what happens with a lot of our content. With the best of intentions, we still sort of, uh, we validate those barriers by creating this us versus them, by being so queer with our content that people can't relate to it. And therefore they're not listening to our story because they feel like it's somebody else's story. So the understanding is how do we then merge our stories with the world so that the world relates to them and resonates with it in order for them to embrace it. And stories are everywhere. And this is the art of, again, I said, advertising, conversing, getting into people's minds. Uh, storytelling is a big part of impactful conversation and content generation. And through the ages, we have been communicating and connecting with human beings through this game of storytelling. They have been used in the past to hand down learning from generation to generation over thousands of years. We know what we know because what our grandparents told us. They know what they know because their grandparents told that. So in a way, we are also going to be somebody's ancestors someday, right? So as society's ancestors, we are passing down some stories as well. So what are these stories we're going to create? And uh, it is an understanding of, it, it's kind of somebody's entry point into understanding a different experience. So if you look at your target audience, we're talking about the queer community. We're talking about people's minds we need to change about the queer community. Um, these are people who don't have the experience of being queer and therefore it's very easy for them to judge and very easy, you know, Sri Lanka's love. And I, Tarusha knows I'm going through these these days on TikTok because they love making unsolicited comments and judgments on uh, an experience that they have no idea about, right? But so that's what Sri Lanka is. Uh, but how do we make it an entry point for them to understand our experience and to sort of empathize with that experience? And a good story usually engages with someone on an emotional level and it incites their imagination. So I'm going to play a little video because otherwise I talk too much uh, just for you to see how storytelling has evolved over the years so that you understand the space you are in now. 40,000 years ago, here, an no? ancient hunter drew a picture of a bison on a cave wall to tell his neighbors about food opportunities in the vicinity, fixing in our human DNA a compulsive desire to tell stories to one another.
When Neanderthals painted on cave walls, they told visual stories. They were people of very few words. And the stories they told were all about survival, filling their stomachs, avoiding dangers. In other words, filling people's needs. 10,000 years later, the ancient Greek epic poets, such as Homer, recited poem stories in spoken words, sometimes talking for hours. How to keep audiences interested? Well, he spiced his odyssey with audience-pleasing violence and sex. The hero, Odysseus, battles the one-eyed monster Cyclops. He's with the fetching magical goddess Circe. This made the story compelling, and Homer took his place in the annals of history. Storytelling received its next big shot in the arm around the 5th century, when early forms of handcrafted books were produced in small batches in Rome. These masterpieces represent some of the world's earliest stories told in classic book form through written words. But even a thousand years later, in Shakespeare's time, a large number of people still couldn't read, so didn't understand some of his eloquent words. So the playwright wisely filled his works with great writing for the heads of the intellectuals of the day and body scenes and humor for everyone to enjoy. Shakespeare appealed to the head and the heart, engaging a wide variety of audiences. Turns out, that's a good strategy for telling stories, even today. 300 years later, in the industrial age, sophisticated technologies were leveraged to create storytelling machines through the invention of motion pictures and radio broadcasting. Movies opened simultaneously around the country, making it possible to tell one story to mass audiences. That made storytelling big business. Radio aired hilarious comedies and thrilling dramas with refreshing little one-minute breaks called commercials delivered through wireless technology. Movies and radio were shared events, either in audience-packed movie palaces or home living rooms where the whole family crowded around the radio receiver. Only 50 years later, storytelling science was growing rapidly, blending the optical genius of movies and electronic technology that birthed radio in yet another new story platform, television a single-eyed monster to rival Homer's Cyclops, and brand storytelling, in which advertisers promoted products to consumers nationwide, reached its zenith through TV spots. Pundits dubbed this brave new world after World War II the golden age of television. But there was only one big problem with the miracle of TV. Unless you owned a broadcast network or were a huge corporation who could pay for the airtime, nobody could afford to tell their story on television. It wasn't fair. Of course, as in any good story, a stranger always comes to town to rescue law-abiding citizens from the bad guy. The hero who tamed the Goliath of expensive exclusive brand storytelling on television was, of course, the Internet. Now, in the computer age with web video on the Internet, we have the perfect storm, a technology democratically available to just about anyone to use all the methods developed during the many ages of storytelling. You still have to have a good idea for your web video and a compelling visual message, but if you do, people will respond. Scientists say moving pictures are the most engaging form of communication in history. People respond emotionally to video because they immediately identify with what they see and hear on the screen. People want to be who they see and to have what they see in videos. This gets your story across in the fastest, most powerful way possible. This is true whether a 12-year-old girl watches Jimi Hendrix on YouTube and imagines she could one day play guitar that well, or a business person watches an online video showing a successful company and longs to have the same good fortune. Now that you know the accessible power of video, what story do you need to tell? With the right concept and messaging, script and talent, camera and editing, and thanks to the global distribution channel of the internet at your fingertips, the whole world awaits to applaud your story in the golden age of web video. 40,000. Okay. So, years ago. Um, sorry. Um, this video might have talked about how storytelling on visual format evolved over the years. Uh, but the fact of the matter is if you watch the video and if you notice, you can hear me, right? Everyone can hear me? Yep. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. Um, yeah. Yes, we can hear So you. the fact of the matter is that if you watch the video, you'll understand that through the ages, when different people, whether it was the cavemen, whether it was Shakespeare, whether it was businessmen, uh, they were trying to pass on an idea to someone. They were trying to basically make people listen to them. 
so they were using different techniques but at the end of the day they did two things they tried to attract the heart and they tried to attract the head and a lot of the time when we do content and we do content for a cause that we care about our heads and our hearts are very involved already right so we talk about it from our own bias towards that cause but we don't realize that your audience the head and the heart are two different things right um so sometimes what works for us might not work for them even though we are so passionate we are understanding we are we are wondering why don't they understand why can't they see it my way why are they being this why are they not listening why are they not changing why is society being like this it's probably because we are talking to our heads and our hearts and we are not talking to their heads and hearts so irrespective of the medium that you have now you have a easily accessible free media that you can use but how do you talk to their heads and their hearts in order for them to listen whether you're writing out your uh, storytelling content whether you're visually depicting it whether it's through audio means whether it's through experience interactive means whatever channel you're using how do you talk to people to their heads and their hearts because that's the way you change their minds right so here's the thing if you tell me a fact i'll learn if you tell me the truth i'll believe you this is a quote not something i came up with but tell me a story and it lives in my heart forever and that's why i'm saying when you create content if there are stories that are woven into your content it makes your content so much more engaging to people's hearts and to their heads so what is content content according to wikipedia is the is the art of publishing it's art and communication content is information and experiences that are directed towards an end user your audience content is something that is to be expressed through a medium such as speech writing or any of the various arts out there so basically content is a message being communicated to someone in different ways The thing is when we are talking to people or when we are communicating we have to understand some facts right one is the fact that okay for instance when you talk about content in the world today it's everywhere it's no longer this era where people switch on a tv program and everybody sees the same ad at the same time when they are watching that channel this is the age of the internet and when it comes to content there's zillions and zillions and zillions of things out there so when you're creating content you're getting lost in that clutter right you're not making the impact that you can could have made 50 years ago because there's so much more that are that people's heads and their hearts are more interested in uh for instance at the moment the statistic is that on a daily basis there are 4 million blog posts being published on the internet so what are the chances of your blogs actually being seen by people who are not already your followers because the whole idea of content creation is to reach more people no than who already know you then not only the problem of the space the media space being so overloaded the heads that we are trying to get through to right now those heads are completely distracted all of us are like that we are so used to this tak 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 so many thousands of messages on a daily basis that we are, that are going into your heads so you're very easily distracted and in 2000 the average attention span of a human being was 12 seconds today it is 8 seconds and what do you know a goldfish has 9 seconds of an attention span so you're basically marketing to minds that have a shorter attention span than goldfish and you have to remember that so when you're creating content you have less than 8 seconds to get into their heads and their hearts not easy not easy at all how do you create content that makes them sit up take notice and want to know more before their goldfish like minds drift away that's that's the craft that's the art and it's stressful i'm telling you as a content creator it's so stressful to kind of keep upping your game every day the less and less and less the attention span becomes so the art of impacting such short attention spans uh, is to go viral because if one person is going to lose interest in like 8 seconds 
then you have to make sure that that person within that eight seconds has already shared your content with like 10 other people so that you have eight seconds into 10 more that you can, you know, reach. Uh, so you have to go viral. Content is a viral game, virality game. Otherwise, if it becomes stagnant, it's not going to do its work. And this is a quote that says going viral isn't random magic because everybody thinks that viral content, we say one hit wonders, ah, lucky fellow did one thing and it was like really cool. And we do have the one hit wonders in this world, but uh, that that might go viral, but nothing else they do is viral. And so their message dies a natural death after a while. So the, the art of going viral isn't random. It isn't magic. It isn't luck. There's a science to it. And there are very few people in this world who have figured that science out and who are using it. So how do we create great content? Uh, I'm gonna go through these 12 steps of mine uh, that I've put together. And this is obviously stuff that I have taken from learning that I have gotten from outside as well. I'm not gonna claim that I came up with all of this. Uh, I've just learned this from other content creators and my own research, and I have kind of put it down here. Um, and I'm going to go through these in detail with you so that uh, it helps you also uh, think about what content you're creating. Um, and I would like to first, before I start this, invite you to take a piece of paper or if you have your phone or your laptop or whatever, some space that you can scribble on or write down notes on. I want you to start now itself, think about your content. What is the kind of content you want to create, right? And when we go through these 12 things, uh, try and put down ideas for your content based on what we're learning, right? So that actually you're going to be building your content strategies and ideas while we continue this. So that ideally by the time this session is over, you have a few more things that you can sort of work on uh, at the end of it and things that will, uh, without actually trying to think of uh, what did Shanuki say, uh, mm, how can I do that? It makes it easier to start jotting down ideas while you go ahead. Okay, so the 12 things that I have, I have, I believe are important to create content, good content, is one is you have to first define your content goal. Then you need to define your message. You need to research your patterns and your audience. We'll talk about what that means. You need to be creating audience personas. You have to be authentic. You have to be original. You have to be timely, very important. You have to interact. You have to find the right channel, which a lot of content creators get wrong, I feel. You need to know how to draw attention. There needs to be, unfortunately, those days, it used to be quality, not quantity in the day of content creation is quality and quantity because again, attention spans. What is your CTA? And CTA is call to action. What is your call to action in your content? And you have to keep evolving, which is again a difficult thing to do because we all tend to get into comfort zones. Let's go through them one by one. Let's talk about defining your goal. There are five questions you need to ask yourself in your content creation journey. How do you make your content better? Is to first ask these five questions. What am I trying to do? There are lots of people when I ask them, when I ask content creators, what are you trying to do? There's a lot of fast and blah, blah, flowery language. I'm blah, 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 I want to do this and I want to do that and I want to blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, can you put it down in one sentence? One sentence in the simplest language that you know, what are you trying to do? Make it understood to you and to anybody else who knows, okay, this is. Sometimes people ask me, Shanuki, what do you do? Now you heard that introduction that Zainab gave me, right? If people ask me what I do, I also don't know what to tell them. Because there's this, 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 so people are all you guild of many trades. You are like an expert at everything. Yeah, so, but this is the thing. That's not great content for a brand personality, right? What is Shanuki? Who is Shanuki? Shanuki is a freaking unicorn the way it's, it's it may, my profile makes me look like that right but and this is something that I'm struggling with myself because I'm advocating for so many things and a very good friend told me this yesterday as well when I was having a long argument with him uh, that when I create content what am I going to be known for what are people going to come to me for what are people going to attach an expertise to me for 
because I'm trying to be a Jill of all trades, as Zainab uh, put it, and I've identified myself as that in my LinkedIn and my Tinder profile, right? <laughs> but that doesn't help if I'm trying to make a difference in the world, which is what my purpose is. What am I trying to make a difference in? So many different things that I become a Jill of all trades, master of none at the end of the day, as far as my audience is concerned. So it is a self-reflection journey for me and for you. What are you trying to do with your content? So now I have learned to specifically break my content up into different channels, different kinds of content, different worlds, different universes, and then different target audiences also. And it's, it's very stressful to keep up with that life, I have to tell you. Right? So if you have just one goal, that's good. I admire you, right? Um, but ask yourself, what are you trying to do? Your content, what is it trying to do? Why is the main question you're asked? Why are you trying to do it? Just because you're queer? Not good enough, right? Because I'm queer, I want to talk about this to the world. It is important for you to represent um, your identity and represent your community, of course. And it is part and parcel of your responsibility also to um, stand up and make movements happen for your community and for yourself, for sure, right? But that can't be the only purpose. It can't be about only you, right? Why you're doing it needs to be a lot more about what the other person is also going to get out of it, not just you. Because I think this question and I apologize if I hurt people when I say this, but as an, as an advocate, I also have I, I've made this mistake where I make it about how I feel and create content from a very angry or anguished or emotional space where I'm just trying to tell the world how this makes me feel. Not going to change anybody's hearts or minds. It's just going to make me more anxious, right? Um, I have to think about what's in it for them because that's the way human beings are. What am I getting out of it? If I'm being told something, why should I invest in it if it's not part of my world, right? Uh, so the why is very important. That passion, that purpose you have has to burn not only for yourself and your community, but it has to burn for the whole world at large. So say, I ask myself, why am I trying to save trees? Why am I trying to save animals? Uh, and those days it used to be because animals are so cute and I love animals, you know, but it's not about that. I have to learn the science. I have to learn the realities. I have to learn and talk to people about what's, what they are going to suffer if they don't get on this game with me. Um, and that why is important. Who is your third question? Who are you talking to? And here again, you can't be a kotur, uh, which happens with a lot of uh, causes, brands, services that are trying to advertise. You're trying to say a lot of things to a lot of people, different people. Hamotama, you're trying to be a coconut thaile, it doesn't work. You have to be able to target and segment your audience and decide who are you talking to because each piece of content can only talk to one, one group at a time. You can't talk to mothers the same way you can talk to their teenage sons. It's different language, different personality, different conversation, right? And it's very important to understand every content piece you do or if you categorize your content as a collective, who are you talking to? So that the way you craft your content then has to resonate with that audience. How are you going to do it? Again, important. We'll explore this later also. Um, how are you going to create this content that makes a difference to that audience? Um, how are you going to do it in a way that's going to be sustainable for you? Like putting all your heart and soul and effort into maybe producing a video, it takes you two weeks to edit and all that. Can you keep doing that for the rest of your life if you don't have the money to do it? You have to be careful about that. So how means, what are the channels? We're going to talk about this uh, in detail, but you know, uh, what's the format? What's the structure? How are you going to edit it? How are you going to, how are you going to make this package this for this who that you have identified? Then when are you going to do it? Because in the middle of a pandemic, if you talk to somebody about saying sale, sale, sale at some stores, uh, shoe store, come and have, uh, buy in the middle of pandemic lockdowns, do you think that's going to work? It's not. Same way you're trying to create queer positive content. Um, and if you're doing it at a time and if you're putting it out there at a time where people's minds are completely 
completely distracted with something else, especially in a larger society, your message is not going to be heard or you're going to possibly end up annoying people because activists, me being one of them, do this sometimes that we don't realize why people are pissed off with us. Perhaps because their mind is not, the, they don't have the space to listen to us and we keep pushing our message at them. Uh, so we have to be careful about timing our stuff right as well. But politicians do this very well. It, it is a game of politics to understand, manipulate people's minds at the right time when they're ready for it. So we went through defining your content goals. You ask yourself those questions and I hope you're writing these down so that for your own content, like what am I doing? Why am I doing it? Who am I doing it for? Then we go into the second uh, part of creating great content, which is defining your message. Again, something that a lot of people get wrong a lot of the time is, especially in advertising, I'm the first person to put my hand up, Sri Lankan advertising is the shits sometimes, honestly, right? Because they're trying to say everything. They're trying to give a message that doesn't mean anything to anyone at the end of the day. Because it's not single-minded and it's not single-minded. <laughs> ඔබේ පණිවිඩය ඔබ එක මනසකින් එක අරමුණකින් අර්ථ නිරූපණය කරගන්න ඕන මෙන්න මේ කන්ටෙන්ට් එකටද නැත්තම් මේ පේජ් එකටද නැත්තම් කැම්පේන් එකටද මොකද්ද පණිවිඩය කියන එක නිසි ආකාර ඩිෆයින් කරගන්න ඕන ඊටම සංක්ෂිප්ත විදිහට ප්‍රධාන පණිවිඩය පැහැදිලිව සංක්ෂිප්තව ඊටම යථාර්ථවාදීව එක වා not a long sentence that like has lots of commas and yeah neme commas dama dama yana semicolon dala ehema peli pahak vitara gila me ivara wena wakya stop or see an instagram post or they read a blog at the end of it what are they going to take out and what is that in a simple message think about that your message has to be simple your key messages should use language that is easy for your target audience to understand so if you're talking to, for instance, if you're talking to some, um, uh, sorry to bring race and religion into it, but uh, simply because it is a problem in this country. So if you're talking to a single Buddhist 21 year old man from Vanatha Mulla, whose only thinking is that Singhala Buddhists are the, the Singhala are the patriotic race of this country and nobody else belongs. Uh, and he has not had education beyond his all levels. If you go to him with a lot of profound, sophisticated jargon about being woke and progressive in society, he's not going to listen to you. Unfortunately not. So again, the language you use and how simply he is going to get what you're going to say matters to change his mind. So now again, think about your target audience for your queer positive content. Who are you talking to? What are their minds like? How do you simplify it in a way that they understand in their language? You should avoid acronyms, jargon, flowery or bureaucratic sounding language unless you're writing a paper for a reason, for some presentation, right? Your key message needs to be strategic. It should differentiate your organization or what you stand for, right? If you're representing sort of a, a movement or an organization or a group while articulating the value or the key benefits that you offer. It should be convincing. So your message needs to be believable. It can't be a lot of bullshit because people can smell bullshit now a mile away. It needs to be meaningful information. It needs to create a sense of urgency. The way you craft your message has to make people think, I have to change my mind now. I can't wait till I'm 50 to do this. It's important. So it needs to stimulate action by people. So the wording that you use should be very action oriented, very decisive rather than Meh, gay rights, gay people matter. Hmm. You know, it's, it can't be about that. that. There has to be an urgency. So why, why should it matter to you now, right? Um, it needs to be relevant. It should matter to your audience. That's what we said, heads and hearts before. So they should communicate, your, your message should communicate useful, relevant information that the audience finds appealing 
and not only on a logical and rational level because we know that sri lankans are not very often they are not logical or rational right especially when it comes to causes like this so it also has to evoke their emotions they have to be emotional about it how do you make it relevant it has to be memorable and this is why uh, guys like uh, you all must be knowing kapila rasnayaka um i hope you all know who kapila is uh, kapila does some strange way out things on the internet these days kapila is someone i have known for i think about 20 years and he is a gender rights advocate and he has been talking about gender rights consent respect all of that stuff men's men uh, men's rights for years and years and years and years like every other ngo activist out there nobody gave a damn i've done some videos with kapila as well went on the internet with like about 200 300 viewers on youtube right then kapila started kissing coconuts and mangoes on instagram i don't know why i still don't know why right he started making up some absurd languages he started doing some utterly like way out whack stuff that i used to be like oh my god what are you doing and i still do that my mother is like does he need mental health support but if you look at the numbers of people who are following him right now right when he kisses a mango everybody's like machang ella bro pudumai o supiri and i'm looking at that and i'm like oh, what is going on but then he kisses that mango and then afterwards he talks about consent nikela namut ea e mango eka kiss karati ite passe ఏమంటారు <laughs> but i'm saying how can you make your message memorable so that people remember it so that it doesn't sound like yet another gay rights campaign or yet another uh, queer advocacy campaign that we see all over we see pride campaigns we see this we see that and it's like yet another one and if you're not in the community you're going to be switched off to it unless you have somebody in your family who's in the community or that you can relate to somebody so your sometimes that message to be memorable there are different ways in which you can do it it can be emotional it can be controversial it can be shocking there are so many ways but how do you make your message stand out and therefore memorable it has to sound like something they haven't heard before right and then it has to be tailored going back to the fact that messaging must communicate effectively with your target audiences and this means the messaging should reflect the target audiences needs priorities issues their terminology their relationships to you your community to society or to your organization and other factors that might help messaging better communicate with that audience so it needs to be tailored specifically again for that target audience once you decide who you're talking to so good messages and this is like summing up everything that i said before how to define your messages good messages create a we factor and i think in a lot of not only sri lankan but globally as a as a non queer person i'm saying right uh because i am an ally and i've been in advertising and i've worked with organizations that are queer focused organizations in creating campaigns for them but i am telling you as a non queer person uh who still supports this a lot of things that i see out there campaigns being created for the queer cause talk about the queer community and how the queer community feels and the queer community's world and it alienates me right it alienates me it doesn't make me feel like i am one of you to feel as passionate about it as you are so i think a lot of the the difficult the highly difficult but the most important thing about creating your messages is it's got to create a we you belong as much as i belong 
Um, and I think inclusivity needs to happen from us when we create content for us to expect that inclu inclusivity to be given back to us. And it's very difficult to do. It takes a little bit of science and more than a two hour workshop to figure out how to do that. And it takes a lot of trial and error, but good messages create the we. And it's not me telling you something or you telling me, it needs to be relatable. So that's kind of the end take out of how to define your message. Then we come to number three, which is research the patterns and your audience. Now here, when I say research the patterns, it's to understand what's working out there because you're generating content, you're creating content. And it's important for us to also know what is the other content out there that's working so that we can borrow, not, not to plagiarize, not to take what they're doing, but and it doesn't have to be only queer focused content. It can be like, what are people watching? What are, what are the trends? What are they uh, they're responding to? Um, you know, uh, what is the chatter? How are people talking about these things out there? And when you say talking about it, don't, I would say, especially in Sri Lanka, don't look at global campaigns. I mean, watch them for inspiration, but don't look at community chatter on global campaigns because the European market is a completely different mindset towards these problems. You have to look at the South Asian context. See how these South Asian homophobic people are talking about this stuff, right? What is the chatter out there? What are their fears? What, what, are, what are their worries? What are their concerns? Why are they feeling threatened? What, what's trending with that group? What are they watching? What are they talking about? What are the insights therefore? in the trending work, the patterns online right now, content that's going, what kind of content are people consuming? So what's working, what's not working? So this is important for us to keep learning. I'm 42 years old. I got onto TikTok only in 2020. Before that, it was like, what the hell is TikTok? What kind of name is TikTok? And now I'm addicted, right? So it takes a while. And um, the thing is that Technology is evolving, platforms keep evolving. And if you start creating content, say you're a Facebook content creator, after a while, Facebook has become redundant, but you're still creating content because you're happy on Facebook. But you have to understand where your market is. What is the new stuff out there? These people, what are they watching? What are they doing? And be there, right? And then you research your audience as well, because you can't assume to know who they are, just like they assume to know who you are. It, may, it takes a little bit of understanding. Not everybody's homophobic. People might be homophobic for a reason. Or people might not be really homophobic. They just might be scared to, uh, scared to own up to the fact that they're queer friendly, right? Simply because they're worried about criticism from somebody else. It could be different reasons, right? But we tend to become very angry at people who are not on board with our causes and they put them down as, ah, you don't, uh, you don't support women, therefore you are a sexist pig. You might not know why. So it's important for us to research them. Uh, research in terms of their genders, how the different genders work towards a cause, uh, their ages, what phase in life are they going through that might be also um, influencing how they feel about your cause, their demographics, where do they live, how do their communities and neighborhoods condition and influence them, their psychographics, who are their friends like? What are they living through right now? Uh, what are their emotions around certain things? Um, and their behaviors. Behaviors is, yeah, how do they behave in friends? So it's like understanding a day in the life of your audience, right? Uh, what, what kind of way in which, uh, how do they behave towards this? What triggers them? What do they like to eat? What do they, when do they like to sleep? All these questions, when this person starts becoming more and more and more and more close and human to you in your head, it becomes easier and easier and easier for you to create language that they understand. Otherwise it will always be my language versus your language. So that's how we go into creating this audience persona. Once you've decided who you're talking to, and once you have done the research about what this person's life is like, and the insights around this person, then you create a persona. And this, I like to do it, and I've done it in my ad agencies. We love to do this when we're doing creative briefs, is we write, we create a character for our audience person. So you generalize character. 
so and so is this uh, is 15 years old is comes from this background lives in this kind of family unit does this with his life these are the kinds of hobbies he has this is the kind of music he listens to this is what he goes through his day doing these are his fears these are his worries these are his passions and then you realize there might be some gaps some instances or moments in their life that you realize this is a good place for me to get into his mind with so it might not be at the gym that i go and talk to him about the queer community or you know it, it might be it might not be right it all depends on who this person is it might be through music if he is like if this category of people are completely like into music and that's what their life is all about they're escaping into the arts and into music and you know a lot of young people are doing that nowadays what kind of art it might be through that art form that you start communicating with them this is a guy who spends all night long listening to podcasts because he's got no life and he has got insomnia i might start doing podcasts so that i get into his head so you actually when you create this persona and this day in the life of your audience member you realize the opportunities for you to actually a touch point for you to be able to talk to them at a place where they're open to receiving your message then understanding when their life when you create the day in their life you understand what are their needs does this guy need to sleep does this guy need friends does this guy need to feel validated does this guy need a mother does this guy need love in his life how can you provide not that i'm saying go and provide love don't provide love without consent but i'm just saying how can you make him like he's getting some value from you how can his feelings be validated his needs be met through your content that attaches him to you that attaches him to your content that makes him an advocate for you i know there's somebody already here who's on this page that i didn't know he was going to be in this session but number 5 was be authentic and original and i've thought of four people in sri lanka who i feel are completely authentic and original and there is no other of them that i know of uh with the kind of content that they create so you have kapila who i spoke about you have eshan who i'm a huge fan of and eshan is just standing out miles and miles because he's like one of the few the only person in sri lanka that i have seen who does what he does and has got like on a, on to national platforms with it right has been in the newspapers is on youtube i'm seeing him on internet i love his stuff and he makes me feel good he does such positive content at the same time i am sensitized to the cause so i know what he's trying to say and i think eshan is one of the few people and eshan i'm just giving you all this um, lip service here because you're here uh, but uh, but yes definitely there are critics i mean kapila also has a lot of critics but it's very very difficult for queer positive content out there to have as much love as eshan has had on that that mass scale um knowing that he is doing queer positive content because it's he's out there it's not even subtle right but there's so much joy in what he does that it doesn't feel like he's attacking people with you know the cause and you just want to yes he creates a lot of laughter and humor around but at the same time i think i think there are people i don't know ishan you'll have to tell me because i know you know more about what kind of audiences you have and yeah. your critics and all what you have to go through i'm not going to even like pretend that i know what you might be going through but i think even if i took a segment of society that is not traditionally queer friendly if you got into trouble i have a feeling they will come and help rescue you is that true or not do you feel like that yeah that is so true that is so true yeah because i think there are there are queer content creators that people want to stay away from because that queer not queer the barrier is there right so they are entertaining to watch but but i think with you your content is there's a lot of joy and there's a lot of um, i feel I included yeah 
yeah maybe that's like uh, most of uh, most of my audience say that it's like ane atta jeevithe vena deval ne shan meva like this is what really happens to yeah. me so i think that uh, they they relate to my content and that's the main reason yeah and and there's no difference in my aunty sumana and some <laughs> female character that you do something yeah. yeah. completely yeah. relatable yeah so then i mean you're normalizing a lot of things there but also being authentic and original to who you are right so that's an example oh, thank i can you. thank you very much thank you very much <laughs> no, but thank you for the content you create and i see and i think i wrote to tarusha some time back when i saw him first on tiktok i'm like man this little dude has so much joy it's so infectious the dance moves and the costumes and i mean so cool and i know like there's you don't know this tarusha but i had an entire office full of people who used to watch your tiktok we used to do that together and they used to think you were like insanely fun to watch uh and i know that your content did convert a lot of minds in my office space without my help right it was just that because you were lovable with the way you do certain things you're very lovable it's it's infectious so there's a lot to be said for that kind of content creation and that authenticity of not trying to be someone cool or you know some uh, based on some other idol out there um similarly you know i mean uh, otara for her cause uh, danu how again danu is a little bit more muted in certain ex- experiences that he creates but then when you look at jaffna boy what he does with jaffna boy you know there's a lot of originality and that's the point i'm trying to make that um, try to give your content you don't have to be as dramatic as uh, ishan and kapila uh, you don't have to be but you know that's why i brought otara in there is a kind of a quiet elegance in the way she does things but still she gets noticed for the content she creates um but think of what is the spin that you can put on your work that stands out that makes you more noticeable number 6 be timely uh and that's where i talked about the importance of selecting the time and place we heard that there is a time and place to say something to someone when you're crying when you're angry when you're upset when you're emotional somebody coming and telling you i told you so or some uh, your mother or your auntie or your grandmother coming and saying me but kevad what do you feel like at that point you just want to throw the bat at them right and so when it comes to even queer content or any content animal welfare veganism i mean women's empowerment i also make this mistake many times which is why i'm saying it's a learning process for me also time and place i might be very passionate about my cause but i have to understand that person's mindset at that point is this the right time to get through to them or am i going to get rejected even more or if my message is going to get rejected simply because i timed it wrong um so you have to think about that as well so that timeliness is where you your ideal content is a combination of whether it's timely whether it's trending at the moment this conversation is there trending stuff that you can get on to or can you trend jack we call it trend jacking right so if you're talking about the pandemic find a way to weave your queer content into the pandemic conversation makes it more relevant to people uh, like like ishan was the, just saying you make it so normal like you can relate to this ah, i also have an auntie like this i also have a situation like this my house is also flooded like this suddenly there's something this this conversation that i've been having suddenly there's more content that i'm seeing that relates to my experience so that conversation trend the relevance uh, this is brand priorities but um the relevance is is it relevant to your community as well as is it relevant to that person that you're talking to at that moment and does it resonate is it resonant that is does it fit their interests um so again it's about i think again if i'm taking tiktok i am realizing what i do on instagram i can't do on tiktok what i do on youtube with my talk show i can't do on tiktok because that's like a whole different community the way i talk there or the way i communicate has to be a completely different thing at a completely different times um so i tried this 
uh, just, just like a little segue, just bringing a different cause into it, women's empowerment. Uh, but I tried to do a little bit of um, an experiment. I did TikTok lives and I chose three different days, three different times because the TikTok lives, I wanted to talk about objectification. I wanted to talk about this, this thing of whenever a woman goes live, the first things that you hide, your high beauty, high sweetie. And uh, uh, this, that, that it starts, right? So I wanted to see, okay, are they a completely different set of people who were more open to what I was talking about, who were agreeing with what I was saying, uh, who were, even if they weren't agreeing, they were asking questions. There was a discussion. Why do you say that? Uh, what do you mean? No, I don't agree. But there was like a discourse happening. If I went at 10 o'clock in the night, completely different set of people. The minute I say respect women, hop, poor Karen. That's, that's what I've been getting now these days. Karen alert, right? Uh, or they do something just to piss me off because they know that ah, she's, she's passionate about this. So let's, let's try to, you know, dismiss her, cancel her, bring her down. Um, so I think, again, timing, getting my message across to people. And then if I'm talking to the 10 o'clock group, I have to talk to them in a different way. Maybe I have to put on a different persona. Maybe I have to make some jokes that they think I'm cool with. Uh, and, you know, spin it the way that I'm, I'm still learning, still figuring out how do you become uh, a friend so that they listen to what you say and not the enemy. How do you stop being the feminist in their eyes, right? So yeah, timeliness and relevance is very important when you're creating great content. Number seven, interact. Again, this thing about inclusiveness. The more people feel that you're a part of the world, that you're creating or they're a part of the world that you're creating or you're a part of their world, the more likely that they are going to take your content and share your content and embrace your content. And more importantly, if you can hit that sweet spot, advocate for your content, right? So make it engaging, whatever you do. It shouldn't be a big lecture or it shouldn't be like, this is a show and you don't belong to it. Watch it, enjoy it, move on. No. Uh, ask questions. You can be like, even if you're doing a blog, it can be things like give, give them something to think about, give them reasons to write back to you. Uh, if you're doing TikToks, if you're on YouTube, have, have interaction, have other people's voices and not just your own. It's always important so that they see there's a bigger audience out there. There's a bigger world around this message. Get an emotional response, emotional or physical. And by physical, I don't mean go and get the slap. I'm saying physical should be, get them to click on something, direct them to some website, direct them to some, level. have some sort of response, emotional. So many emotions that the Sri Lankan person, average person can go through in a minute, right? If you go and watch a conversation on the road, you'll see that, right? But there are so many emotions that we can tap into. Make them cry, make them laugh, make them gasp, make them... Uh, I don't know what the word is for that, <laughs> uh, I, but get some sort of reaction and it works. Psychologically, even if you might not like doing that, right, they will remember that there's muscle memory in the emotion they felt around content. You love movies that have made you cry or laugh, not movies that you watched and went, hmm, good, move on. The movies that you watch again and again and again are movies that make you feel something. So content is like that. When you read something, it's got to hit you that you need to share it with someone. Macha, read this. This is right, really cool. Or when you see something, have you seen? <laughs> Emotion, your content needs to create in somebody. Um, and it ideally should be a little more than me. User-generated content works. Uh, and this makes your life also easy. If you can come up with stuff where your audience is creating your content and you are simply becoming a curator for it and making a message out of that, that's amazing, right? Uh, and it really works because it really becomes a community effort. Then it becomes a social conversation rather than only you talking to the rest of society. 
the language we talked about this the language of the target audience is important instead of official language instead of we know that i mean there is appropriate politically correct language that you must use all that is well and true but if you're talking to that one other mullah johnny again asking him to be politically correct or asking him to respond to politically correct doesn't work so sometimes you might need to be politically incorrect just to get through to him right and if that's what you need to do for a message to be heard in order to get that entry point and after you get it in then you can start molding and changing the narrative and helping him through it do that right so the language you use and be one of them uh, again this is something i put in because it's queer positive content and i say this with all love and all respect that a lot of queer content that i see out there is so much i'm queer i'm fabulous nobody needs to understand me and i don't belong in your world so here i am so it's a very uh, there's a little bit of arrogance and i'm i'm saying this very honestly and it happens with even feminist content there's a little bit of arrogance where you alienate the other and when that happens i don't feel like liking the work i don't feel like following the work it's it's quite annoying that and you get a lot of that uh i think globally also you get a lot of even uh, i mean like drag drag content you know uh there is stuff that you like to watch there is stuff that's engaging um but then there is also stuff that's like completely way too bitchy for me and i'm like no on another level no and they make it so much about a fight we've got a fight with the world we hate the world because the world hates us that's not going to make me feel included that's not going to make me feel like advocating for you if you're going to hate me i'm just going to like whatever you do you i don't want to be uh, which happens to a lot of people in an audience so make sure that you become one of them you hear them out you give them the same respect that you expect in return so interact with your audiences so this is a uh, an example that i wanted to show you about some very interesting user generated content and this is actually for body positivity another cause that i'm passionate about but this is where this um perceptions of perfection was uh the the content creator gave out this image that you see on the left uh they sent it to 18 different countries and they asked designers photoshop this woman and turn this woman into something that you feel the men in your country would be attracted to right and that was all they did that was the content they created the rest of the content and the rest of the message they wanted to put out about beauty standards being different to different people and that there is no one standard that that was what they were trying to do with body positivity and uh, beauty standard it was like you know uh there is no rule to what you should look like um all the content that came after that was what the users generated not the content creator so if you see like across from across the world this woman's photo was taken and photoshopped into various 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 ideals in what they in their minds they felt were ideal in their world right and then all the content creator had to do was post this and make a statement and this became like very popular because it was entertaining to watch for the world right oh what is this country going to do what's it going to look like here what's it going to look like there but you're also subliminally telling people so then does it really matter what she looks like because everybody's got a different standard of what's good and what's not um so i thought this is an interesting example of user generated content and i wanted to show that to you Number eight, find the right channel, and there are lots of channels available today. Channels are exploding and increasing and expanding because we are working from home. We are stuck behind a screen, so there are new opportunities out there to get through to people because they are online more. So you can either choose whether you want to blog, whether you want to create videos, whether your content is going to go on emailers, social media. Are you going to create eBooks? Again, now that's so super easy. uh are you going to create interactive content visual content podcasts do you want to do live events there's so much 
of opportunity today that we have that I didn't have 20 years ago. If I wanted to tell a message to the world, I had to actually get on a TV program to be able to be heard because I didn't have the internet or access that I have today to do this thing. Um, so I think there's a blessing for the queer community today that it's very easy, even though media channels, traditional media, if they don't want to do queer content because you know, mustn't upset somebody in government or some harm the row somewhere will get upset. So mustn't do that. The Catholic church will go mad. Uh, if they start regulating and saying no, there's always media at your fingertips that you can use yourself. Uh, but the thing is your content. Now, if you have defined your goal, defined your message, defined your audience. If you know who you want to talk to, then it's a case of just researching, finding where they're at and using that media to talk to them. You can do this yourself and you can do it with zero income also without a cent. Uh, you just have to have the time and the interest to do it. So think about your content, where will it work the best? And I think there are, again, uh, simply because these are the two content creators that I know on this forum. If I'm taking Eshan and uh, Tarusha again, Eshan is using a lot of YouTube and uh, Instagram. Uh, I know you've been on uh, TikTok as well. Tarusha is like, I've seen Tarusha predominantly on, his, uh, on TikTok. I, I haven't seen his work on other platforms. Maybe it's because I'm not there, but, um, but they're using that medium to create content that is relevant to that media and to reach that particular audience. So find the right channel for you. If your skills are in writing, maybe blogs are for you, articles. Uh, if your more your skills are visual, for sure, go into video graphics. Um, if you're a social person with a big network, then social media is the place you need to be because that's something that you can leverage. So think about your skills and think about how you're going to get your message out there in a way that's different. Then we come to drawing attention. Now this can be a little controversial. So that again, I said, no, less than eight seconds of an attention span. So we need to get people to listen to us when we talk uh, and take notice. So we have to do some stuff that gets their attention. So there is this thing called clickbait um, and clickbait can be good and clickbait can be bad. I have, I have uh, a different opinion on this. I think all clickbait, if it's used as clickbait without victimizing anyone or without perpetuating a bad message through your clickbait, it can be important. So there is clickbait that where it's half a sentence and you feel like, um, like it, it makes people, it's like teasing and makes people think it's something negative when it's actually positive, but you have to click to find out that it's positive, but you click because you thought it was negative because you wanted to see the controversy that human insight psychologically is people love scandal. People love drama. People love other people suffering. It's something that works for us. I don't know why we are so morbid, but yeah. So the minute we see the possibility of watching somebody else's drama to gossip about, we will click on it and then you might be able to give a message. So as long as you are sure that your clickbait will get the click, use clickbait, get that attention, get them into your channel. Celebrity endorsements are another way for content to be seen and to get attention. Uh, I call them influenzas, but it's a real thing. It's working with people, so why not use it? Um, provocative headlines. Again, language is a new way to actually get get eyeballs. Uh, but their headlines are going to like the everybody knows the minute you put sale, 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 it can do, outdo any massively beautifully crafted creative campaign that has spent millions of rupees on an international advertising agency to create. All the fellow at fellow at has to do is put sale, 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 and all the women will be there. So it's about knowing your headlines. How do you create the attention? A unique visual that nobody else has seen before can really, again, memorability. Because I haven't seen something like this before, I will remember it. And of course, things like promotions, giveaways, competitions, everybody wants to know what's in it for me. So that's one way of uh, creating content that gets more reach can be through 
things like that. Those promotions can be even interactive where your audiences have to do something and that doing something can be relevant to your cause message. So these are some things that um, draw attention. On digital media, video holds attention. That doesn't mean you have to do video. I'm just telling you, this is a statistic, right? Um, the average length globally that a single video is watched is for 2.7 minutes. If you do something more than 2.7 minutes long, you have to make sure that it's good, that it's creative enough to keep them watching. Otherwise people do switch off in average 2.7 minutes. So within that first 2.7 minutes, if you can hold their attention and have your message, your main message, uh, make the impact you need to make, it's good. 59% uh, of senior ex executives, that's the older, older crowd, would rather watch a video, older and I would say posher crowd. The, the opinion leaders and the ones whose minds can change other minds, those ones, um, they would rather watch a video than read text, uh, even when both are available. That's because they don't have enough time, they don't have enough interest to read a lot. People are less and less interested in that, so visual works. So if you look at the type of content, there's a few statistics to help you. Video content, 64% uh, of marketers use video more uh, because they do that through either webinars, live streaming, videos, whatever, uh, live stories. 61% um, use a lot of uh, written content like blogs and articles and ebooks, again, depending on your audience. Visual content is your infographics, photos, you know, like Instagram, your charts, if you want to get out some sort of important messaging. Uh, there's 56% there. And audio content at the moment, globally, it's only 30%, 38% of people who use podcasts and audiobooks. I think you have to understand your target market to know whether they're going to listen to something or would they prefer watching something. There's another little hack that I found very interesting for content creation. The brain processes visual information 60,000 times faster than text information. That's why I'm saying visual works, especially in the digital age. And this is how people remember. 80% of people remember what they see. 20% people, 20% uh, is of what they read. And 10% is of what they hear. So again, this is pushing for visual content. See, read, here. That's the way in which they remember stuff. That they, uh, so if you're creating information, if you're creating infographics, if you're creating an article, remember that the image on the article, the headline image on the article is as important as the content of the article. And did you know, going back to what I talked about before, stories, telling stories are up to 22 times more memorable than facts or figures alone. So it's important to share facts and figures, but if those facts and figures don't have stories attached to them, chances are people are not going to remember those numbers. How do you make your content magical? How do you make it memorable? Like I said, tapping into your emotional responses through the style, through the memorability. Uh, that happens through creating quality and quantity. Um, so, sorry. Uh, so it's not just about how good the content is, it's how often the content goes out there. And I think that's where you need to start building content calendars. Don't do anything ad hoc. If you want to become a powerful content creator, you have to stay in people's minds. So you have to have a scheduled list of things that need to go, whether it needs to go once a day, once a week, once a month. There needs to be a regularity with which people see your content so that all that other clutter out there in the internet, when they're distracted and they're like, like um, you know, Dory in Finding Nemo, it's like, oh, and then your content, bring it back to you. And then again, they'll be like, oh, then a new piece of content, you bring it back to you. That's the game you have to play. You have to keep talking to them and you have to stay consistent. Don't try to change your tune. Because the minute you change your personality, you change your style, 
And if you keep changing like that, people won't know who you are and they can't keep up with it. So how do you keep it interesting? One, pick out the most important things. Don't try to give a whole hell of information in the way you do things. People are not going to remember. They don't have the time to remember the details. Keep it simple. Leave out unnecessary details. So if you're scripting something, if you're writing something, I got dramatic and I pulled off my uh, earphones also. So it happens when I get too caught up in myself. Uh, leave out and uh, condense, condense, filter, 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 edit, 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 edit everything. Edit everything and then edit again because you come back to the nutshell of what people need to see. That's important. That's when they're interested. Create messages visually. I explained to you why visual is more important. Less words, more meaning. Not like Shanuki's workshops where she can't shut up, right? Three, mirror life. Make it, it's like what Ishan does, mirroring life so that people connect with what they experience and your experience. Four, don't give the game away too easily. That's, a, that's a, like a masterclass in advertising and something that we never learn is, and our clients never learn is, don't tell them what brand they're supposed to eat or drink and give away the whole science of the brand in the first 30 seconds of your commercial, right? Because it doesn't make sense if people have nothing to wait for and they know the story at the beginning itself, what are they watching the rest of it for? So keep them enticed. Let your audience think about things, get them emotionally invested and then tell them what you need to tell them. And five, you can trick and you can tease, like I said, with things like clickbait, with things like good editing, with things like music, with things like uh, provocative content, uh, provocative messages, controversial messages. You can tease them and keep it interesting. So here are a couple of quick editing tips that I'm going to go through very quickly for the video content creators. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. But I think a lot of videos that we create at the moment, we don't put our heart and soul into editing. We just create, we, we film something and we put it out there. Um, but your videos can become a lot more impactful and powerful if you actually do a little bit of editing. So edits can make or break your story. One is the pace of your content. And this is for the video creators, right? The pace with which you go, if it's really slow, it's going to be really monotonous and boring. So quicker pace uh, to, to change the speed of how you do things, how you get your messages out there, makes things more interesting. And the urgency, like I said, creates some urgency. That comes from the pace of your content. If you're doing a talk show like I do, or if you do like videos like Ishanda's, uh, multiple angles, is interesting to watch because then somebody feels like, you know how we watch a movie and you see a cut from this side and a cut from that side and those multiple angles make it visually gives you something different to keep looking at. So your mind is still engaged. Otherwise, if you're all looking at it on one frame, like you are now on me, this gets very boring after a while because you're looking at the same thing. So your mind starts going, oh, the rice and curry I had for lunch in my brain now kind of thing. Uh, transitions are interesting. And now you have free transitions, very easy transitions on things like TikTok and things like uh, Insta stories and all. You can put in all those kind of things that really make it fun. Uh, and it also creates a mood. It creates a flow. So how you, how you use your transitions is as important as how you frame your shoots. Color grading, uh, for the videographers here, I hope you know what I mean, like colors set emotions. So if you're trying to make someone cry, making that image bright, happy, positive, and pink is probably not the best way to go. It. You bring in a mood, you bring in the greens, you bring in the grays, you create the mood through the color psychology. Uh, even your images, when you do Instagram, that helps, right? If you're trying to create your infographics, red, red color will get attention if you want like an important statistic to be understood uh, whereas if it's like a cream or a brown it'll be like hmm, okay so the importance for your message can really the colors can really help on how you edit and of course music always helpful to create a mood to create an emotion in your audience 
So those are just quick things that you can think about when you edit your content. Uh, and when you use music and things like music and colors and all, sometimes, especially with queer positive content, even if they don't want to hear what you have to say, you'll at, at least the music will help them feel something. At least the colors will make some sort of psychological feeling happen. They won't know why. They might really hate what you are and who you are and you know what you represent, but they still might feel sad because there's like there's that beautiful music that you know making them emotional. It could work, right? So number eleven, one before the last. What is your call to action? And this is what do you want your audience to do? Here again, we get this all wrong when we create content or when we do advertising in this country. So what is the question that your audience will have? And remember that whoever your audience is, they're always going to watch you and ask, so what? Unless they're already on your side. And then they'll be like, you go, girl. Yay. But otherwise, it's like, what do you want me to do with this? So you've made a video. You've written a blog. Nice. Very good. What do you want them to do? What is your call to action? Do you want them to go to a website and learn more? Do you want to sign them to sign a petition? Do you want them to find out more about what you're talking about? Do you want them to click follow? What is it you want them to do? You want them to share? Be clear about what you want them to do and make it clear to them also. Don't expect people to share things uh, if they're not your people. So chances are they are usually not. So what's going to make them share? Give them a reason to share. Otherwise, tell them to share. It's fine, right? So make it clear on your content what do you want your audiences to do. Do you want them to talk back? Do you want them to interact with you? Ask them the questions. You know, uh, a lot of the time we create content and then we wait for things to happen. We are not making them happen. And then number twelve, uh, not something that I need to spend a lot of time on. Finally, it's to keep evolving. If you remain a one-trick horse, probably that's what's working for my uh, Jane of what Jane of many trades or Jill of many trades thing is that uh, because nobody knows what I am, I can remain interesting to different people at different times, uh, and I hope that keeps me relevant for a little longer, um, like an aging diva who doesn't want to be forgotten. Um, but keep evolving. As a content creator, it's very easy for people to become bored and move on to the next big thing. And I have seen some major names in Sri Lanka, big content creators who are like full on, like if you say, who are, who are the top influencers of Sri Lanka in 2020 are not in 2021 because people forget. People look for the next best thing. So you have to keep evolving to keep staying on top of it and to keep changing because your audience is also changing. The world is changing, needs are changing, media is changing, trends are changing. If you're not changing, you're not going to keep up. Uh, so it's very important that your content also in terms of everything you do, whether it's language or style or format or platform, it needs to evolve. Stay authentic, stay original, but evolve. So, once you go through all those 12 things of making great content, how do you measure success? Because it's important to keep track of it. Is your content working or not? Insights and analytics are your friend. If you really want to turn this into like an ongoing consistent thing, you have to be able to keep measuring whether you're doing it right. Because measuring is also what keeps us with our feet on the ground and our heads on our shoulders to know, OK, I have to improve. We must not grow egos so large that we start floating because we're not as great as we think we are. Um, so the arrogance will be the end of us. We need to keep measuring and we need to keep understanding, okay, what do I need to change? What do I need to tweak? That's a journey that all of us are going through. You have to ask yourself questions. Your content, when you create it, find out, is it understood? What you wanted to uh, communicate, has that been understood? Have they watched it or read it to the end? Is it shareable? And here, because we are passionate about our content, sometimes we can only see it one way, right? So it's important. I mean, it helps if you show this to another person you trust or even a couple of people before you actually publish your content. 
so that they can give you different perspectives for you to consider. Uh, so is it shareable? Will they watch it or read it more than once? Are people talking about it after you put it out? Has it created a conversation? Even if it's a bad conversation. Huh? Now, this is something that I have learned lately. Uh, no PR is bad PR. So even if there's an argument about something, the fact is that you have created a conversation. It's an opportunity. If, there's, if there are people engaged in this conversation, whether it's negative or positive, you can still keep putting your information in and turning that conversation around. So has it created a conversation? Whatever it is, is it ethical? Important, if you're standing up for something, you need to make sure that you stand up for your integrity around doing it as well. And has it helped the problem that you're trying to solve? Has it, if you're trying to do queer focused, queer positive content, has your content contributed to the positivity that you want to generate? Or has it created more of a divide and more of an alienation of your community? Ask yourself those very hard questions. Sometimes you might not like the answers, but you need to consider those answers because you need to course correct. So here are some quick do's and don'ts. I have 20 minutes more. Uh, do maintain integrity at all times when you do your content. I hope you all are still writing down uh, for your content, what you all would like to do and all that. Uh, do avoid disinformation. It's very easy in our righteous indignation to go and spew some facts that we have seen somewhere without checking and verifying first. Uh, so fact check whatever you're going to share with somebody to try and be right in an argument and say this, 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 this. Make sure you're factually correct uh, and don't spread this information just to get people all worked up because ultimately you don't ask versus them. It happens in every activism. It, the feminist movement, the vegan movement, the queer the movement. Queer movement to get me hammer. We are movement to come make a winner. Me a piece of her own key and after get get to. So don't be that person. Don't plagiarize work. Somebody may have done some brilliant work. Doesn't mean you need to do the same thing. Put your flavor on it. Take their inspiration, but do your own thing. That's how you remain authentic and original. Do credit your material sources. So if you're using material from other people, if you're quoting other people, if you're using infographics or paper, uh, credit it. Credit it because you're creating a network also then even they see that they have been credited for something, when you collaborate in that way, then you have more allies on board to help you with your causes as well. Do get the consent of all stakeholders, so important for content creators today. It's very easy for us to make content, uh, but if it's featuring somebody else, if we have uh, put somebody else's picture in our uh, Instagram or somebody else in our videos and all that, their families don't know. They might go through a lot of things because of it. Uh, so you have to get their consent. There might be people who don't want to be out there on social media, so you need to get consent if you're using anyone else uh, in your content. Do regular self checks on your purpose that asking yourself, what's your why? Why are you doing this? Why are you still doing this? And I ask myself all the time, why am I doing this? And when I remind myself why I'm doing it, then I'm more determined to keep going. So do self checks, make sure you're asking those questions like, is it understood? Is it ethical? Am I doing this, 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 this? Do that. Respect your audiences as well as your critics. It's important. Uh, if you're going to argue with someone, especially with this kind of work that we do, it's you know that there will be critics. You know there will be enough and more haters and trolls and people, hackers. I mean, they'll, they'll go to many, many, many lengths just to make your life miserable because that is their intention. But it doesn't mean you have to become one of them. Uh, you don't need to lower yourself to their standards. So give them that respect because even though they don't respond to it, I have learned when you get into these long arguments on the comment sections, 
right? <laughs> Which happens to me a lot, um, bigots and whatever. Um, if you are respectful, they might not appreciate it. It just makes them even worse sometimes. But there are at least 20 people watching that conversation. And you can actually create a differentiation between who you are and what you stand for and who your hater is when those people see how you are conducting yourself in this argument. So make sure that you keep it respectful. Make sure that you stay open for discussion. Sometimes you have to shut people off. Sometimes there's no point, right? But at the same time, you can just say thank you for your point of view and move on without going gah, 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 which I see a lot on social media today. And it's really ugly. It makes you switch off. But at the same time, don't tolerate disrespect. This is what I was saying. If there, if, if there is a barrier that they push, there is a personal barrier that they have. <laughs> Unfortunately, because otherwise our emotional well-being is not worth everything that we have to go through for our causes. But um, if you know that there is a boundary that you will not allow someone to cross and you have clearly communicated that boundary. Now, they can't be expected to know what your boundaries are, but you can communicate what your boundaries are. You can give them the first warning and the second warning saying, I don't appreciate this kind of language. If they continue to do that, and if they call you a lot of things, if they start you know, saying things that are completely unnecessary, you're free to shut them off, right? Block them, uh, report them, uh, you don't need to get to their level to mock them and say stuff to them, but you can cancel them. It's all right. And I know that conversation is out there like, is cancel culture okay? I think after a point, if somebody is not willing to learn and you've given them that opportunity to learn, then there's nothing else you can do, just cancel it. It's fine. Don't tolerate the disrespect because you created, you create a precedence for the community also. Ah, it's okay for you to disrespect me, you know? Um, and then do check your own unconscious bias. So important because we are passionate advocates for causes. Sometimes our passion gets in the way and our egos and our pride and our passions get hurt when people reject the content we're trying to create. Uh, sometimes our content can be biased because we're passionate about something and that can alienate people or that can unintentionally make people feel attacked. So let's be more positive and more open-minded about it. Uh, it's important and it's a lesson that I'm also constantly learning and trying to be better at. Uh, check your own unconscious bias when you create content. Okay, I'm gonna play a few um, campaigns that not particularly queer focused, but I think have created content in interesting and different ways. Uh, this one is really cool. And I think this is one way of talking about important issues in a way that nobody can hate you for it. There are lots of ideas how you can change the world. Some people think you should just complain about it. That won't change the world, they'll just make it mad. Some people think you have, have lots of money money. Make it rain everywhere you go. <laughs> Holla for a dollar. Some people think you have to be really loud and yell a lot. It's like with a bullhorn shouting. Hey you, yeah you, do it my way right now. You heard? Other people choose to just make fun of everything. That's dumb, that's dumb, everyone's dumb. It's easier to make fun of stuff, but it's cooler to make stuff. Some people think changing the world can only be done by the smartest person in the world. Just put them in a room, let them figure it out. The solution of world hunger? Food. Wow, that was like so amazing. Some people see the bad in the world and they just decide to ignore it. But that won't help anything. Some people think you have to be really famous and super cool. In fact, lots of people think you have to be really powerful to make a difference. Like being mayor, or senator, or president. 
But the truth is, a title doesn't make you more important. The world is changed by you. It's one person filled with love, and they just have to live it out. So they do something awesome. Then that person is filled with love, and they do something awesome. It just goes on and on and on and on. And the next thing you know, everything's awesome. Some people think it's impossible to change the world. It's impossible to change the world. Well, you can see why they could think that. Living in the world with kids who are hungry, people who are homeless, families who aren't happy. I'm just trying to figure it out like everybody else, man. But I do know this though. The next time you feel overwhelmed or totally alone, remember this. Things don't have to be the way they are. The world is changed by ordinary people, little people living out big love. And that's what gives the world a reason to dance. So, how do we change the world? At the start of this year, I asked all you guys to make the year more awesome. Time to be awesome and laugh. Make this year awesome for somebody else. Whether it's helping the homeless with Socktober, throwing a parade for somebody, or giving an inspired gift. You can see my holiday gift guide by clicking here. You help prove that the internet can be an awesome place. Thank you, but we're not done yet. This coming year, let's show the world what awesome really looks like. <laughs> so I just think he, he's like, this is from 2014, but such an awesome little uh, content creator who made a lot of waves in, in the United States, but just speaking about causes that was important to him without trying to be anything else. And I think that I chose that video because that's what we think, right? As content creators, you have to be well known, you have to have a lot of money, you have to change the world like this, change the world like that, change. Uh, but you know, it just takes your special brand of unique to actually change somebody's mind. So. Uh, don't ever pit yourself up against any other content creators out there. Just be authentically you. Um, this uh, piece of content, I think we have all seen. Um, so I'm not, no, this is the Punji Dupate Katava. I'm not going to take uh, time. I'm not going to show this to you. But these are two content creators that um, I think at the moment they're flying high, which is Block and Dino as content creators. Uh, and they keep switching it up a notch with every video that they do. Uh, they keep adding more and more uh, interesting things that keeps their followers going. But I have had chats with both of them saying that at some point that is also going to become a blind spot and redundant. So they know that. And um, so they also have to keep sort of evolving to keep that keep on the wave that they're on, but uh, they've done some really good work. And this is actually just the video that they put out um, soon after the Easter Sunday attacks. I won't take it, it's, it's a little long, so I'm not gonna uh, take too long with it. I won't show it to you. I'm sure you've all seen it before already. Um, and finally, I'm just gonna close with the content that I'm creating, not because I want to sort of praise myself, uh, mainly just to make a bit, but no, not really. But because this is where my content creation journey um, really, really began. I was creating content for a long time without realizing that I was creating content because I never thought of myself as a content creator. It was just like, Chanuki has something to say, so she's gonna say it and be heard like wherever she can. Uh, but this is where I consciously started creating content with that intent was with my talk show. And it was because uh, as someone who's gone through a lot of mental health issues in my life uh, and who never addressed them or never spoke up about them. And someone who has been, um, I think I'm a survivor of very many forms of sexual violence. Uh, again, things that I never spoke out about because you know, good girl, privileged family, who wants that kind of attention? And, you know, I thought all my power is going to leave me if people saw that I can be weak and vulnerable. But I realized that it was only when I started talking about it and having conversations that A, my life changed because there was a weight off my shoulder uh, to not feel like I was holding it all in uh, or a ticking time bomb. 
but b when i talked about my struggles people started connecting and reaching out and saying oh my god me too and that gave me this light bulb moment of the fact that in sri lanka one of the biggest problems we have with a lot of our social issues is there are no conversations we are not talking to each other um we are keeping it to ourselves because we love talking about other people's businesses we don't like sharing our own uh, when it comes to personal stuff and that's where this idea of the talk show came out where i wanted to not do a talk show yes i like to talk but it was about sharing stories it was about allowing people a safe space to say what they felt they can't say in their families or uh, in their communities where they felt there is no judgment and even if you disagree you can agree to disagree and still remain friends and still have those conversations so my my intention or the objective was to uh, allow people to see that it can be done and if we can do it then you can do it with your friends and family as well so you can get together with two or three trusted friends and you can have these difficult conversations in your home at a cafe wherever you meet each other uh, not feel afraid um and that was my intention and that was why i created the talk show and i have tried attempted over two years to evolve um so i just want to share like a small piece of uh a, a video that i created two years ago at the first at the end of the first season of the talk show just to show you what my content is all about more important concern is about the virginity not yeah. about how my child is going to come out of it so if you are a lesbian you're going to get raped you're going to get raped like hell and you're going to suffer like hell justice system is is really set up against the survivor if you go to the police and tell them that you are being abused what they will say is pirim yugama tama ivasanne igana gaanna yeah. this is a talk show that's all about uh speaking up about what you shouldn't be talking about so like uh, someone in my family realized i was a lesbian and they raped me when i was 11 so yeah, it continuously happened and ila was like you know um he was 24 i think at the time um i was 3 i was a sexual object i was used for 5 years severe psychological damage severe self harm numerous serious suicide attempts so today we're talking about divorce in sri lanka i was trapped there and i had nowhere to go because of the societal norms yeah, at the time yeah. i couldn't think of going back to my parents in your ruined woman uh, that you nobody will want you ever again because we're going to be talking about a very sensitive very difficult conversation and this is me being in hospital after a suicide attempt uh, and yet he is the first psychiatrist to walk in she's not even talking at this to my and he was and he was doing this saying he is getting late for his lunch we don't talk about mental health in schools at all trans women are kind of used for mocking comedy in front of everyone he was asking such a dear good thing that what the pleasure that he can take from me as a man that made me to start my journey also to help the others for women are raped every hour the estimated number is 1 in 3 children one in 5 people will go through mental health issues it is also incredibly difficult to take sexual assault and rape to court in this country. Yeah. We created this show with the primary objective of encouraging people to have open and brutally honest conversations and to give women a chance in Sri Lanka to really speak about what's on their mind but stuff that nobody dares to talk about.
layer of criminality attached to a particular community for like more than a century now doesn't help. What it is is seek help, talk about it, be open about it, just like we are. So this journey started off with me wanting to talk about things that were important to me. Thank you, Zainab. <laughs> um, but now it has, in a very short span of time, it's just the beginning, right? I'm not even close to the kind of goals that I wanted to achieve with this. But it started about being about me, but now it's about the community. And it's kind of my constant questioning of why am I doing this is because now it has become a more user-generated kind of thing where the ideas, the conversations are being continued by viewers. Um, and um, so, sorry. Um, so we've kind of shifted out of what was initially just a YouTube channel that we expected our friends and family to watch because it started growing because we started having these conversations. And I thought it was important that we also need to evolve. This content needs to evolve be beyond just a YouTube episode uh, every two weeks. So now it's like, yes, we are on Facebook. We're having these conversations. We are on Twitter. Uh, the Instagram page is there. And most recently we actually uh, launched a blog for, because we realized there are people who have stories who they don't want to come in front of a camera. They're not ready for that yet, or they don't have the support system to do that yet, but they do want to feel heard. They do want to share because you know what they say, right? Your story can be somebody else's survival guide. And um, so they get, there is a catharsis in them being able to talk about what they went through and connecting with people without putting their face out there. So we've opened this blog and it's a, like a community blog that's open to anyone who wants to share a story. Um, so they can do it with their name or they can do it anonymously. Uh, so that's another sort of integration that we have added to this pie uh, that is called Shh. And um, I am evolving. Uh, it is difficult because again, you know, this is all voluntary work. Uh, so there's like no money. <laughs> There used to be a job that I had that could spend on creating this stuff, but that doesn't exist anymore. So in a lot of ways, yes, we have those fights that, uh, you know, I have to keep looking for grants. I have to keep looking for winning sponsors. It's difficult when it's controversial subjects, you know, brands and sponsors don't want to associate with things that society is uncomfortable with. Um, but at the same time, I realized the value and the importance of keeping these stories going because people want to tell stories, people want to share. Uh, and this content has become about people's content, not me uh, and not my stories anymore. Um, and so the next stage of the evolution is, yes, we have started now doing more Sinhala and Tamil content because that is where the stories need to be shared more. Uh, I am looking at the possibility of uh, in the seasons to come, can we allow other people to create sh episodes? Because I can't afford to keep doing this. I won't always have a crew to keep uh, making each and every episode. So what if, what if Sri Lanka was allowed? What, what if the queer community was allowed to do their own sh episodes? I have the channel. You create your episode. I'll give you the format in which it needs to be created. You host it. You have these conversations. Talk about these under our guidelines. We put it on our platform so you're able to do your stories uh, you're able to sort of it's it's the next level of evolution where i don't have to then travel to batikla to shoot an episode i can tell people in that if you have something you want to talk about let's discuss if it makes sense if this is going to change the change society let's do it um so it might be another level that i'm looking at of course there'll be a hell of a lot more coordination involved and a lot more sort of monitoring situation, but that's how I want to create this content. And that's because my objective is uh, to, make, to make Sri Lanka talk about uncomfortable things. Uh, so it was just a, I, it's just a case study I wanted to show you because it's what I'm familiar with. And I hope it kind of represents what I talked about also in this whole workshop and the kind of the rules that I try to be guided by when I create my content. And I think that's what's made the content successful uh, in a way, because I'm, I'm constantly double checking and self checking myself against those rules and making sure 
have I stuck to this or not? Yes. Thank you. And Shana go forth and create. <laughs> Shanaki, thank you so much. Your content was amazing. I've actually started tearing up during that last uh, segment of yours, although you claim to be tooting Emotional your horn. Emotional response. Yeah. Yeah. I know she got what she wanted from the audience by my tears <laughs> at that point. I mean, it was an amazing session. I learned so much. I mean, everyone at yeah. FPSL is sitting down here and writing notes as well. I'm very so excited to oh, collaborate with you in the future on Shush. And I'm sure the fellows as well would love to come in and try in their best ways to amplify their platform by also using sure. your platform sure. as well. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I see that collaboration among all of us. Thank you so much again. I know we're a bit tight on time because they have yeah. another session in 15 minutes. Oh, okay. so it's all right. If we close the session for today, you will see Shanuki again. She's conducting a session on Sunday as well, as well as Saturday, a panel discussion. So uh -huh. you're going to see that luminous face all the next three days. It's a so luminous face. Okay. Beautiful face. So we're really excited. You. Uh, you will definitely see her soon. And I hope all of you can take your well-deserved 23-minute break until the next session. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Thank you Thank for you sitting so through much. it. It's not easy to sit so through much, it. Bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. See you on TikTok, Tarusha. <laughs> Bye.